What am I supposed to say? Oh, hi. I'm uh, Justin Van Leeuwen. I am a commercial photographer here in Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, I am currently at my friend Friends Media Styles uh, Luxurious Studios here, and we're going to do a photo shoot today using uh, some Westcock gear and the new Canon 600 EXRTs. The RT stands for Radio Transmission. And uh, they're pretty neat because you can control them all from on camera. So uh, we got some models lined up. Uh, we got some friends coming in. And I think we're going to have a fun day to shooting some portraits. So because uh, today's video is all about gear and how to use it and stuff like that, I want to run over what I will be using today and, and how it packs up. Because traveling light is sometimes really important. Uh, you don't always have the luxury of working with an assistant uh, or having a big car. Sometimes you need to be able to handhold some stuff. And while I brought a little bit more than one could probably hand bomb on their own, I still want to show you kind of the portability of some of the stuff. So come on over here. So um, camera-wise, uh, I'm going to be shooting uh, with a Canon 5D Mark III. By the way, this bag is the Think Tank Photo um, Urban Disguise. No. This is the Think Tank Photo Streetwalker Pro HD. HD because it holds a computer in the back there. Uh, Orbis Ring Flash, really kind of awkward to store and stuff, but it does some great stuff, so we'll be using that later. Uh, camera bag here, I've got my 5D Mark III with an 85 1.2L on it. Uh, 5D Mark II as backup. 51.4, 7200, 2.8 LIS2. Got a 24 millimeter f1.4. I don't think I'll be using this today. Not a lot of people look good at 24 millimeter portraits unless you're shooting environmental. And uh, I have a 17 to 40 here, not for portraits so much as some uh, behind the photos sort of shots. So that's that. Uh, I've got a bunch of flash stuff in here. We've got our 600 EXRTs in here, uh, some pocket wizards, which I don't think I'll be using because they never really work right, uh, some nano stands, that's what I love about them, they just pack up into this case, extra batteries, uh, really handy Lumapro LP160s. Uh, these are dummy flashes, they don't have uh, TTL, and I can't man uh, control them from the camera, but if I need something that just works, uh, I can I can set these up anywhere I want, and they'll just uh, they'll just do the job for me really really well, and they're they're really inexpensive compared to the Canons. Um, and then we got let's see here, got a Lastolite Silver Sunfire reflector that pops out, um, and then this case. Now this is a Hakuba. Large, I think it's a large size bag, and I really like this size because it holds it holds a whole bunch of stuff. And, and this is this is a lot of what we'll be using today. Um, I got the Westcott Apollo strip lights, so there's two of those because um, you can use them as as rim light, and you'll see me set that up later. Uh, grids for them to help further control that light. I have another uh, medium Westcott Apollo. This is a 28 inch softbox, so it's square. Uh, probably use that as our main light. I can fit a stand in here. And uh, this is a handy little boom pole. If you do have an assistant, you can telescope it. It has a special KC pull adapter attachment on the top. Um, I won't probably be using this today because I don't have a lot of help, but uh, if you can draft a person into holding stuff, it's uh, a lot easier to wiggle one of these around than carry something heavy like this. So that's our light mods. And my background today will be the Westcott Photo Basics X Drop with uh, a white background. Uh, super, super lightweight, packs up really small, supposed to fold out to three by six feet, so it'll make a nice white background for my subjects. And uh, that's what I'm using. I think, uh, I think we'll start getting set up in a minute. So uh, what I got here is the Westcott X-Drop backdrop, and I'm going to be setting this up here. So uh, it's very, very light, which uh, is what uh, attracted me to the piece in the first place, um, because this is something that you can set up on your own. Seamless white, you know, usually takes a big roll of paper, some light stands, it tends to be heavy, awkward for sure. This is something any single photographer could take out and, and use. Um, the case expands. Uh, to allow for additional backdrops. Today we're just going to be using the white, uh, which is sort of a flannel material. Here are the legs. Uh, they're made of aluminum. They're very lightweight, actually sort of frighteningly 
so it's a little wobbly. You set this up like a tripod. All right. So right now, I'll tell you right now, this is something that bugs me about this setup, is this depth. Right? If this is where the front is going to end up being, I've just killed all this space on my location. So we have a lot of space here at Media Style today, but some rooms I'll work in, they're going to be 10 feet long max, uh, and every inch is going to matter. So this is not practical for anybody who works in small spaces. And you know what? Even in a large space, that's a lot of space. I get there's a certain level of stability that it needs to have, but I can't help but think that the designers could have put something maybe just a little more straight at the back. I don't know, but we'll set it up. We get these hooks on. Might run into a height problem here, but we'll see. Everything goes in pretty smoothly. Get out the white. So this is a cloth material, which uh, could wrinkle. It doesn't seem to have too much of a problem with wrinkles from what I've seen, though I'm sure it would easily pick up dirt. And I'm sure it's washable too. You might want to bring a lint roller with you. In case you have pets on a location or something. All right, loop that on. Extend these back parts there. Soft, it's like a bed sheet. I feel like if I'm gonna get cold at night, I can use this to keep me warm. Oh, there's actually some loops on the bottom there that I'm also gonna attach. That'll stretch it out and take out any creases. Yeah. Oops. All right. So that is our background. Really quick, really easy. Pretty big, right? I mean, that's good. Oh, that's more than six feet. What is that, seven feet by four or five? I don't know. The distance is a killer for me, you know, but uh, aside from that, set up pretty nice. All right, next we're going to set up some uh, soft boxes. All right, so this is the Westcott Apollo softbox. Um, the strip lights work in a the identical way. They're just a different shape. So the things I like about the Apollo softboxes is that they're actually long, um, which fit into almost every long stand gear bag I get. Like I said, I have this Hakuba bag, which is like 50 bucks at B&H, uh, and it's just great. It's padded, it's got the shoulder strap, it works really well. Um, these things open like umbrellas. They uh, kind of, Get them down on the ground there. Find the center column. You line it up. And then Velcro sticks to everything, obviously. Just kind of pops open like that. All right. You get a little hole on the bottom there to fit it into an umbrella bracket. Right. Tighten that. Uh, this white diffuser comes on and off. I kind of leave it on there so I don't forget it. Um, and when you look in there, uh, you can put your flashes on in a couple of ways. You can put them on. Uh, ideally, you push the light backwards into the center of the uh, softbox, and then it reflects back out. Uh, and that's how you get kind of a nice, soft, uh, indirect light. And then it passes through this diffusion layer, and that's how you kind of get the soft uh, in the softbox. So we're going to set that up. So this is the new Canon 600 EXRT. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the uh, Canon 580 EX2. Uh, part of that is a bigger flash head because uh, it has a zoom feature up to 200 millimeters, where I think previously it was 105 millimeters. Um, but the real big game changer that, that Canon really put in here was the uh, radio technology. Uh, that previously you needed a pocket wizard or some sort of accessory uh, trigger to kind of dangle out of the side and take up extra space and cost you extra money. So it's all built in here now. Uh, and, and getting it set up is super, super, super simple. So uh, you switch this to on. 
Um, you have an on and a lock feature so that once you have your settings, if you don't want that to change at all, you can just switch that to lock and then you can't accidentally um, change any of the settings. So we're going to set that to on. And right now this is set up to be a total TTL automatic flash, but that's not what I want. Uh, so I'm going to be controlling the flash from a command unit uh, on my camera. So I'm going to set this one up as a slave unit. So to do that, uh, I hit this little button here. This is a new button for these guys. Uh, this is the wireless transmitter button, and it cycles through the different wireless options that the Canon 600EX RT has. So I push that once, master, no, slave, yes. So I want this to be a slave, and then you can see there it's in group A. Now I'm going to use this one as a rear light. I've already set up one of these as my main front light. That's group A. I want this one to be controlled independently. So all I have to do is set the group to B, and I'm done. This thing is going to trigger from my camera, and uh, it's that easy to set up. All right, so this is the ST-E3RT transmitter. It just pops on the top of your uh, Canon camera like that. Uh, and what this is going to do is this is going to control my three uh, flashes. So I have one set up in an Apollo 28-inch softbox up at the front uh, with a front w white diffuser panel on it. Uh, and that's set to group A. So I can set, control that uh, individually, and I'll show you how in a minute. Uh, the other two, uh, and I'm going to have to even those out a little bit, uh, are Group B flashes, two 580 or two 600 EXRTs uh, in Apollo strip banks with the grids on. Now what the grids do is they help channel the light. Uh, and for a punchier kind of look, something with a lot more contrast, uh, I've left off the white diffuser fabric that comes with them. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a matter of taste and you can, you can play around with your softboxes like that. You don't have to put everything that comes with them on them. You can modify them a little bit and play around that way. Um, so on here, uh, just as simple as it was setting up the 600EX uh, RT, uh, you just push the little wireless button uh, to kind of connect. Uh, now I've already done that. So what you have here is a green link light and that says it's connected to other flashes. And I've gone around and seen them. They all have little green link lights on too. And then I can set the mode. So right now this is saying, hey, all of the flashes are you know, at this exposure. Well, that's not what I want. I don't want to shoot TTL. I want to, I want to switch things up. Multi um, would be multiple flash bursts. Great for some uh, action photography, which we won't be doing today. Uh, and this is the mode that really just speaks to me. It's group mode. Uh, and what I can do here is individually change the settings per, per group uh, from TTL to manual and I can control up to five different groups on the five, uh, 5D Mark III. Uh, older cameras, uh, you don't have the same level of control, which is a shame. Uh, tough luck, you know, upgrade. So I can just hit a group here, channel A, I can say, okay, I want that to be TTL, which is an automatic setting, and I want that to have a, a flash exposure bias, maybe a little, a little warm to start with, a little, uh, a little higher than a, a base exposure. And then the back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that to a manual exposure. These are rim lights, I want them to be consistent, uh, and they're just going to shoot. And, and I'm going to play around a little bit uh, to, get, to get the right setting. I don't have a, a light meter, so I don't know what the proper exposure is. We're just going to figure that out. All right, so we have our lovely model, Lindsay, here. Now, I haven't actually tested my lights yet, so one of the things I'm going to do here is I want to get those back rim lights just the right way I want them. So I'm going to go uh, onto my commander unit here, uh, and I'm actually going to turn uh, my A-flash off. Uh, there's an on-off button right there. So that's my front light, and that's going to be off. Well, I'm going to be playing around with the exposure settings on my B channel, which are these two strip lights right behind Lindsay there. So you just look at me. These are going to be tests, so you don't have to, you know, Get all crazy. So it's a subtle, subtle rim light on her there, um, which may do the trick. So the one thing you can't do with these is get them to move on their own. You do have to move your light set up. All right, so let's turn on that front light. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. It's working office. We gotta get to the coffee. All right, so again, I have uh, my front group A set to TTL. So this should, should get a nice even exposure on her face there. And this is pretty straightforward, nothing dramatic. Um, just a clean, clean light. 
We haven't lit up the background, so it's not pure white. It's just fading to gray. Um, like I said, nothing dramatic, just clean light, some light at the sides there. So now we're going to move some stuff around to get something a little more special. I'm Are you excited? You should be. You should be. Um, Setting-wise, uh, so to kill my ambient exposure, I'm shooting at about uh, ISO 160. I'm also shooting at 1 160th of a second. I get a little bit more uh, freedom with, uh, with uh, my shutter speed when I'm using uh, Canon flashes. Uh, if I was using things like my Elencom Quadras, I'd be restricted to maybe 1 1 25th of a second uh, so I don't get any shutter lag. Uh, and I'm also shooting right now uh, at f2.2 just to get a really, really shallow depth of field. Another advantage that the 580 uh, or 600 EXs, sorry, um, get me is that they have a very minimal power setting. So I can shoot really wide open uh, without having to resort to a neutral density filter or blocking up the, uh, the flashes. They can just go low power as they see fit. So one thing I can do is I can kill those uh, two rim lights that I'm working with right now. Um, again, from here, I can just turn them off. I go to group, down to group B, on, off. I'm going to turn them off. Now I'm shooting strictly TTL uh, from the A channel. And what I want to do is maybe turn it down just a little bit. And we're going to see if we can get just a nice shallow 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 depth of field shoot 1.2 wide open okay turn around look over here actually hmm still gonna get you to this side yeah it will work that way it's good so what this is doing is just a single light there's no light falling back on the backdrop the backdrop's going more to a gray uh, That looks very nice. So one thing I'm also going to do now, uh, some that the Canon 600s have, uh, are these. Oh, that's not the right thing. This is it. They have these little gel holders now. Now Nikon users are familiar with these. They came with the uh, SB 900s. So this clips over my flash. And these are made to fit gels. There's a, a CTO, uh, which is uh, orange. And then there's a one quarter. I'm going to go with full orange. And what this should do is put any other kind of light that isn't coming from the camera down to blue. And it'll also give a nice warm glow to Lindsay here. So we just put that in here. It covers over the sensor. And what that sensor also allows us to do is shift the white balance automatically in camera. So I was going for a little bit more dramatic look with uh, Lindsay here. Uh, with just a single light, but we were getting a lot of really harsh shadows, and that's not always very flattering on a woman. So what I'm bringing in here is a silver reflector uh, by our talented makeup artist slash reflector holder, Natalie, uh, and she'll just be bringing that in right here since it's a, it's a portrait, uh, and this will bounce some of that light right back up and just reduce some of the shadows under her chin there. All right, so. <laughs> you want me to just right there? <laughs> I got it. Yes. All right, I'm going to turn up my exposure a little bit on here. Group. Actually, what, what, can, can you do that again, where you're holding the collar and looking this way? Like, look this way? Yeah, just look that way. Put, stick your neck out a little bit. Yeah, but a little bit, I said. You like, take everything so literally. Excellent. All right, I'm going to turn my B light back on. Very cool. All right, so that's using um, sort of the daylight balanced flashes on the sides there. It makes it a little blue on the side, but this yeah. one's still very warm and orange so that your face doesn't make you look like an ice monster.
So uh, thanks for coming out today. Uh, we had uh, three great models in here. We did a bunch of different lighting setups. Nothing was really planned out. Uh, kind of dynamically changed stuff, used the different modifiers we had at our disposal. Uh, we had the two Apollo strips, which we used uh, secondary. We used them on a background. We used them as, as kicker lights behind our subject to kind of create a bit of separation. Um, we used the Apollo 28-inch softbox, super easy to set up, nice, soft, easy to use light. Uh, I usually recommend this to most people when they're starting out. Um, and obviously, when you continue on, you can still use it. Uh, we also use the Orbis Ring Flash, um, which fits on our Canon 600 EXRTs. Wish they could have a nicer name, but they don't. Um, we use the Westcott Apollo or Westcott Extra Backdrop, uh, which takes up a bit of space on the location, but really serves its purpose of being a nice white to gray if you don't light it. Uh, backdrop, super light, super easy to set up. And I think that's it. So I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you had fun. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can reach me on Twitter at JustinVL or on my blog at www.jvlphoto.com. Thanks a lot.